Well, here it is. It's July 15th. I'm sorry, it's June 15th, 2009 in Wisconsin. The temperature today is 80 degrees. And here is my horse, my Percheron Lee, all uh, ready to go out on a trail ride. We're going to take him out on a trail ride today. Uh, I brushed him off, and uh, of course he's not done up in the spirit of being a show horse. He's just a horse, and I'm just a guy. Nothing special here to show off, but here he is all ready uh, to go out, and uh, until we get mounted, I'll continue this video. Now here I am, ready to go riding, and I'm uh, appropriately dressed in my summer athletic riding clothes. Now of course, uh, most ordinary people wear all their the various equipment and clothes uh, for their riding, but I used to do a little rosin back riding years ago, and so I never got out of the habit. I love to ride this way, and the truth be told, in most times I ride with very little, if not nothing. But right now, for the sake of this camera uh, video and for the sake of not wanting to make people's eyes water, <laughs> this is how we'll go. And you notice this breathtakingly beautiful 61-year-old body that I have. I'm going to show you how I get on this horse. Uh, you would like to see me do the athletic swoop onto his back, but what we'll do today is we're going to use these steps, and such as this. Funny. Oh. And there we are. And there you have it. So here we are. We're mounted upon Lee. As you can see, I am uh, barefoot. Uh, as uh, the way I used to like to ride, I always ride this way. I guess I never grew up. But we're heading out on the trail now. And uh, this is how it begins, the fence line trail. Now uh, here we're coming to a water uh, crossing on the trail. Uh, for years it's been dry, but this time it's, uh, it's wet. Uh, we've had a lot of rain and snow the last few years, so through it we go. And as you can hear, the water is quite deep and uh, Lee is a water horse. He loves to play in water. And uh, so I hope for my sake and the camera, that he don't decide to, uh, come on Lee, keep going, to get down and wallow around in it, which he could do. Uh, he has never done it, but you never know. Come on Lee. Now we're just still going around the fence line trail. Uh, in the early spring, there's a lot of interesting wildlife around here to be seen. Um, and there is fence line wild honeysuckle that grows in and all out here. Uh, in the earlier spring, when it blooms, and if we get warm weather, the scent is just uh, wonderful, but uh, it's, a, it's really a weed, and the, uh, the farmers don't like it because it interferes usually with the fence lines. Well, we do have a lot of wild honeysuckle. Here is the herd that Lee lives in. Now here we're gonna cross the road. We have to cross Highway 67 before we can get into the state park trails. And uh, sometimes this is always pretty busy, <coughs> uh, but we'll get across it today and I'll continue. And here we've gotten across the trails and we're just going out. Uh, there's a choice to either go right or left, to fork in the trail. Um, I remember a Merle Deucing safari where the camera panned down to the trail and there was a dinner fork laying in the trail and the narrator said, and here we come to a fork in the trail. I had thought of doing that, but I thought, well, it was done once, why should I do it twice? Anyways, we're going to the left trail and I'll continue on from here. Now along here are a few uh, wild plum trees. Uh, occasionally they've borne fruit and uh, I picked a few off and eaten them. The skins are very, very sour, but uh, uh, the uh, flesh is quite sweet, actually. It's got a large seed in it. <coughs> but um, this year, I don't know if they'll uh, uh, bear food or not. It's pretty shady in here. Now, I brought my t-shirt with me, and I have a specific use for it. Um, I will show you as soon as I get him steady, but I use it to flick mosquitoes and flies away from his face, but ordinarily I would uh, 
take a fly mask with me. I didn't this time though. Now here we're coming to a hitching rail, picnic table, and uh, most importantly a mounting block which comes in handy for bareback riders like me who ride percherons and have to get off uh, for various reasons. But uh, there is a mounting block out in the middle of the first part of the trails and uh, I just thought I'd show you that. Finally pick up. Here we're going to try to go for a little trot or gallop. He's recovering from a, an abscess in the foot and I really don't want to gallop him too much. He's actually uh, uh, rid of it. But uh, uh, this little riding does him a little bit of good to get that foot moving. I won't gallop him too much. Lee, by the way, loves oak leaves and this is just one example of uh, how I can thoroughly spoil a horse. I could give a class on spoiling horses, but he uh, finds it very hard to resist oak leaves. Now we're going to go for a little gallop and try to get away from some entertaining uh, deer flies that seem to be following us in this area. They like the pines. Something about the pine areas. Come on, Lee. And that's about the extent of the galloping I will do with him today. It's more than I probably would have wanted to, but uh, I wanted to get this video, and I'm sure he's, his foot's not worse for the wear uh, with that abscess that was there. Here is a nice uh, prairie we have that we're riding by. There's a lot of these out on these trails, and there's woods. There's a lot of different things to ride through. There's hills, there's level areas and uh, this really nice prairie. Uh, this is a Wisconsin prairie. They've, uh, I'm trying to hold the camera as steady as you can on horseback, but uh, uh, the DNR, our re DNR has tried to restore some of these prairies as much as they can. And another view of the trail with uh, a prairie to the right. Uh, very nice. Uh, when it blooms, it's really quite nice. Uh, uh, we'll get some flowers later in the season. Sometimes it's kind of hard to get across the highway. Lots of traffic. Sometimes you got to just get across before the traffic gets to us. And take our life in our hands. But that's progress for you. We got to lot, have lots of cars and trucks. Wendy Oaks Aquatics owns the farm where I keep Lee at. Here's their sign. As I said before, I could give a class on how to thoroughly spoil a horse, but here are some very, very long grasses that like to grow by the water, and of course uh, Lee has acquired quite a taste for this kind of uh, grass. Uh, he really loves it, and uh, it's. Uh, I almost feel bad to make him walk by and not let him uh, indulge in some of it because he doesn't get this out in the pasture, and so uh, I indulge him and I spoil him, but he's my big pet, and what are you going to do? And again, a little indulging to a very, very spoiled 2,000-pound horse. The herd has made its way in to the inner pasture, the small one. Uh, there's our herd. That's the herd that Lee lives in. You'll note that there's no halters on any of these horses. We keep them as free range and natural as we possibly can. I think it's much healthier and the horse is much happier. Okay, now this is how uh, a 61-year-old man riding uh, as uh, on natural as possible bareback on his uh, Bertrand horse dismounts. Uh, you would think I would use the steps, but no, we're going to do this. And we just do a wrap around, and off we go. You can push it again. Now here we are, we've just turned him loose, or we've, we're about to turn him loose, and we're going to see if he's going to stay here for his normal scritches, or if he's going to join the herd. My, my call on it is, he's going to uh, run out and join the herd. So there he goes. <laughs> 